the polls in person. Yes, so Republicans were hoping that turnout today would help reverse that Democrat advantage going into today's election based on early voting and absentee voting. So we did have President Trump in Georgia Monday night, and even though his message um, was, it, he covered a lot of ground, he did stress turning out the vote and making sure Republicans show up today to cast ballots for Senator Perdue and Senator Leffler. They need a big turnout. We think if turnout gets to about a million, that bodes well for Republicans. Um, because a lot of the Democrats who planned to vote had already voted early, either in person early or absentee. So a lot of the votes that were remaining out there today were Republican voters. Well, President Trump has repeatedly claimed without evidence that there was widespread voter fraud in the November election and that the race was stolen from him. He was also heard on a recorded phone call pressing Georgia's Republican Secretary of State to overturn results in the state. Tia, is there any way to tell at all at this point how the president's rhetoric impacted voter turnout in this election? I mean, could we see this tip these races in favor of a specific party? Well, I think by the time that call came out with the Secretary of State, most people had made up their minds. I'm sure it maybe energized some folks who already were inclined to support Democrats just to make sure that they worked hard to get out the vote. But I don't think it changed a lot of minds because it happened so close to the election. However, you know, Donald Trump's message, uh, the concern is that the messages sent were mixed in ways that could have depressed Republican turnout. Because even though he has advocated for Senator Leffler and Senator Perdue, he also has said things like, you know, the election was stolen from me, and that even this runoff race was rigged and not being managed well. So some of those things he said don't really encourage voting. They undermine confidence in the voting process. And those are the things that Republicans are worried about. And we won't know until we get some of those final vote counts from today. Even just the demographics of who voted today will be waiting to see. But the concern is him peddling that misinformation and falsely accusing the state of election fraud may have caused some Republicans to stay home. Well, uh, throughout the election cycle, we've seen the GOP candidates mainly target Reverend Warnock in their attacks, not so much John Ossoff. I is it clear why that is? Well, I think it's two reasons. Number one, John Ossoff was a little bit more of a known entity who went, he got put through the ringer when he was in that special election for a congressional seat in 2017. So I think Republicans felt, you know, Ossoff had pretty much been vetted and it was harder to come up with new attacks against him. But there also is the fact that, let's face it, Reverend Warnock is a black man who is a pastor of a progressive black church who has gone on the record with, you know, liberal views such as, you know, he's a pastor who says he's pro-abortion rights and he's talked about Medicaid expansion and criminal justice reform. So I think Republicans thought it would be easier to paint Reverend Warnock as a boogeyman. You know, he um, has defended Jeremiah Wright and he did not try to pivot away from that when he ran for Senate. Um, he has not pivoted away from his core beliefs and values. And I think Republicans thought they could use that to their advantage to paint him and, Roth and Ossoff by association as these radical liberal um, communists, Marxists, all these scary things that they thought, you know, might be able to turn off moderate voters and energize Republicans to again vote for the Republican incumbents. The question is, did that really pay off? And we won't know until we see more of the election results today. You know, I wonder, Tia, in your conversations with Republicans and Democrats in Georgia, what do they think the chances are that we see one party sweep the election and win both of these seats? You know, I think anything can happen. If there's a split, most people believe that it's Warnock who would win over Leffler and Purdue who would win over Ossoff. That seems to be the conventional wisdom about what it would look like if there is a split. 
But again, these candidates ran as a ticket. You had Ossoff and Warnock together as a ticket and Leffler and Purdue, um, and they encouraged voters to vote for both. So, you know, it's probably a likelier outcome that either both Democrats win or both Republicans lose. But we do expect, no matter what, both races to be close. All right. We are waiting with bated breath. Tia and Michelle, Tia, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And for the latest numbers out of Georgia, let's turn now to CBS News Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto. All right, so Anthony, um, we are over an hour now from when polls closed in Georgia. What more can you tell us at this point? And hours to go before we sleep, Elaine. Hours to, to go, <laughs> I suspect. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so, but look, people who watch election night with us are going to get used to this, right? They, these things take a while. Yes. Um, look, where we are right True. now is 40%, 40% of our expected vote in. Now, that's our expectation based on the patterns, based on the models that we have from the counties that we've seen reporting so far. What you're starting to get are two important things. One is you're getting some representation from counties that are rural and more Republican and from Atlanta Metro, which at the moment is blue, is trending blue, and that's the way the Democrats would like to see it. But the other important part of this, Elaine, is that most of what you're seeing, I can report to you, is early vote and mail vote. And that's a place where the Democrats have had or have hoped to have a relatively better chance. And so far, that is bearing out. What we've seen less of so far is that election day vote. And it's the election day vote where, based on exit polls and based on history, you expect the Republicans to do better. So this lead at the moment that John Ossoff has, and I'll show you in the first Senate race, and then I'll switch over to this one where it's Warnock with the lead over Buffler. Now, this race is a toss-up. Both of them are still toss-ups because in our models, they are in fact much closer when you kind of put in the rest of the state that hasn't reported yet and the way that we know it already trends, either D or R. Now, the other thing, another part of this, Elaine, is when we zoom in and we look at some of these large counties in Atlanta, and in and around Atlanta, I'm going to zoom in here for a second. I'm going to show you, say, DeKalb. Okay, big margin there for Ossoff, but that's only a fraction of the votes that I expect to see out of DeKalb and Cobb County. Same idea. I mean, there's going to be three, 350,000 votes perhaps, you know, out of, out of Cab, or probably more like 300,000 out of Cobb County, and this is just a fraction of those. So all of which is to say, I mean, we're really kind of just getting started. Okay, but always exciting, though, to see those places on the board there on your map light up as the night progresses. Very exciting stuff. Anthony Salvato. Anthony, thank you. We'll check back in with you throughout the night. Coming up after the break, the votes are being counted in Georgia as we await the results of the state's crucial Senate runoffs. We'll have more coverage after the break. You're streaming CBSN. got a question for you. What if you could watch all the CCO news you want and see all your favorite CCOers anytime, anywhere? Well, you can. Go ahead and grab your phone. Come on, I know it's close by. And go to WCCO.com or get the app and poof, there we are, right next to all those other networks you stream. Bonus time, it's free. You heard right, zip not a zilch for free. CBSN Minnesota, built by CBS News, powered locally by WCCO. Wherever you are, wherever you go, breaking Bay Area news live. This is CBSN Bay Area. I'm Michelle Griego. CBSN Bay Area. In your hand, on demand, and absolutely free. Highly updated top local stories and weather where you live. Available everywhere. Powered by KPIX 5 News. CBSN Bay Area. Always on, always free at KPIX.com. 
We spoke to black officers all around the country about the challenges that they face. When you're not in uniform, are you ever concerned for your safety? Out of uniform, I'm, I'm just another guy. I'm a black man first. CBS in Pittsburgh. Your neighborhood news, streaming 24-7. Anytime, anywhere. Find it on KDKA.com and on all your favorite devices. The numbers are rolling in in Georgia. Polls closed about an hour and a half ago in the Senate runoff elections between Republican incumbents David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler and their Democratic challengers John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock. This race will determine the balance of power in the U.S. Senate and, by extension, how easy or difficult it may be for President-elect Biden to get legislation through Congress. Currently, the Democrats, Ossoff and Warnock, are leading, but there is still a very long way to go. For more, let's bring in Linda Tran and Longhi Chen. Linda is a CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist, and Longhi is a former policy director for Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential campaign and advisor for Marco Rubio's 2016 presidential campaign. Welcome. It's great to see you both. Happy New Year. Uh, Linda, so 